Okay, so the socks are off. But basically, I started cranking the sock tube, and when I cranked down far enough that I could clearly see, I just cut this in half. Okay, so when you cut it in half, you got this mess right here because you got little bits of the pieces that you cut in half. And so I just kind of turned it inside out. And I find the piece from the inside and I just pull it. Now it's a little short, but when I go to pull it open, it starts to come apart. Let's find that end again. And I'm just gonna pull it. I feel like I pulled more than that. Okay, yeah, there we go. It just comes off so tail is somewhere there we go just gonna pull it again pull it and it just kind of comes off I could pick at it but for me this is like the fastest way You know what, I don't remember. I don't remember if I remembered. Well, I guess I obviously I did. That the tail that was there, I tucked it in as I went around and I closed it in. So you can't see the tail here at all for the sock. Okay. This is my toe end. So I'm going to turn it into that and do the Kitchener. Okay, these, the sock is connected by its toe and the heel. I mean, by its toe and its cuff. Of course, I don't want to take the yarn off the toe. I'm going to need that. So I'm going to turn it inside out. I figure out where it is. Oh, that is the cuff. Can't tell from the inside. Okay. I'm going to pull this the same way I did the other one. The more I can pull at one time, the further it comes off. That was nice. That was short. Sometimes I can really get a real nice long pull and I don't have to do any of this picking at all. It just pulls really nicely. Sometimes I have to kind of pick at it a little. That's nice. Oh, almost at the end. And of course, it never pulls perfect like it does. Uh, when I'm not on the camera, and you know what, it may just be the fact that I'm on the camera. And so I'm behind the camera with this in the front, and so I'm not getting a good angle. Don't laugh. Try making videos. You'll see how this works out. It's... Okay, so there we go. It's nice and clean. Uh, you can see where I pulled it in. But you can't really, you can't see the tail. Okay, so now I have two socks. Damn. Okay. I'm not even going to say that was like easy peasy lemon squeezy. Like, <laughs> no, this machine takes some getting used to. And uh, 
my goal is to be able to make a whole sock without too much drama. I like to think I'll achieve that. That might not even be a real thing. There might always be a little bit of drama here or there, you know, you never know. Uh, it might, you know, some people like to think, well, the artist does everything. After a certain amount of mastery, the artist does everything perfectly all the time. Sometimes that's the case. Sometimes there's always a little something going on. Sometimes you get so many off perfect and you're like, oh, that was a little incident there. It, you know, it's just one of those things. But my goal is to be able to, to make a pair of socks cleanly with a uh, little frustration. At least several pairs. At least now I can make them from memory without having to refer to a video for every step. So I understand how the heel and toes are made and I can just pretty much do them without stopping for further instruction. Uh, I didn't get a, a like a super duper matchup. Actually, that's not too bad on the sock, but it's not so crazy that they look like two totally different socks, which drives me. I do, you know, I'm just one of those people I like matching socks. But that wasn't that wasn't too bad at all. And this pretty much was being able to understand the pattern, which I really didn't, because this is the one tube that I didn't crank out. So I didn't really know what it was going to look like when I cranked out the sock. So I didn't really match them up, like, really seriously. But you can see they're just one down from each other. So that's not so bad. Okay, let me show you real quick how much yarn I have left. Okay, so I'm losing my light here a little, so it's a little dark. But uh, these are the leftovers from the cones. Uh, you know, I mean, I could measure it out for you. Just looking at it, I doubt there's more than 15 yards on each of these. Uh, this was an ice yarn, I-C-E, from Turkey. It was sent to me with the machine, if I didn't mention that at the very beginning. There is 200 meters on the uh, on the skein, and a meter is about three inches more than a yard. Uh, I could do the calculations, but you can do the calculations. So it's a little more than 200 yards per ball, maybe 206 or something. But at any rate, so that means that each sock is a little less than. 200 yards sock it's, it's a pretty long sock uh, also let's see um, there were 215 rows cranked out in this sock so I measure the length of the leg the length of the foot uh, I know that at about 200 meters at this this yarn in particular, because it does differ per yarns and the gauge that you're needing them up at. And I think I said my gauge was 11.5 or 11 or something like that. Uh, but that means that this is the length I'm going to get and how much yardage I'm going to use for these particular ice yarns. Gives me a ballpark figure. We're still with, within that, um, you know, 400 yards or 400 meters or what have you makes a pair of socks i have a few balls of ooh patents i know i have to see where they're 166 yards on the ball so i still get one sock you know each way when i'm doing the socks like this a little shorter and actually i think i, I knit those at a wider gauge so that that makes it for that but anyway now you get to see what's left over from this kind of approximation but the only real way to be able to tell is to make gauge swatches and I did gauge uh, quite a few of these balls of yarn just not this one before I started because I also wanted to see how they were going to knit up in the pattern if I was to run this pattern backwards run this yarn backwards I ran it from the outside in if I had wandered on the comb from the 
Well, not so sorry. I did it from the inside out. I pulled from the center of that ball. If I had pulled from the other direction and knitted up that way, this pattern could have been completely different. So that's kind of important for me. Like I said, it might not matter for you if you like crisscross applesauce socks. Uh, that's not a problem. But if you don't, then well. Uh, what I'm going to do with the rest of these yarns is something I never do because I'm like a chromophobe. Is I'm going to make some Frankenstein socks. Uh, which means that you just, you know, do any old colors together. I think I'll probably make them ankle socks so nobody can tell. I guess it depends on the yarns. All right, anyway, I'm pretty sure you're tired of hearing me bubble on. This is my completed socks series. Oh, uh, well, uh, as I do some other things, I'll probably make some videos. I'm going to crank up single Angora on the machine, yes, and make a little Angora scarf. So look forward to that. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, sorry about that. And I hope if it didn't... Uh, makes sense to you. At least it was entertaining. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great day.